wow, I'm live. Look at that. And I hope that there are lots of exciting people who are ready to talk about AI research. And uh, if that's not where you wanted to go, then I invite you to go somewhere else on this beautiful internet um, and uh, maybe talk to chat, chat GPT or something else like that. But if you're here for the Squirrel Squadron and you're here to uh, see me uh, fumbling around and uh, figuring out all these uh, wonderful AI tools, I'm not going to claim to be the world's greatest expert because no such expert exists as I'm going to talk about. But um, I'm going to show you how I actually do research using artificial intelligence, and I don't use it to write anything. That's going to be my major message to you. If you don't remember anything else, remember that. Okay, so um, you might not know what the Squirrel Squadron is. I'm going to introduce you to that. One thing I should note is for anybody who's come along and um, says, oh, yeah, I can't stick around the whole time or anything like that, um, please uh, don't worry about that because you will be able to see this right where you are now, whether that's Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn. Uh, it's recorded there and it'll be available, I think, forever. Um, not to mention that we put it on the Squirrel Squadron forum. So Laura, uh, my erstwhile community manager, always doing great stuff for me. Hi, Clinton. Great to see you. Um, uh, the, uh, she's put up. Uh, scrolling across the bottom of the screen, some of the exciting things that are going on in the Squirrel Squadron. What the heck is the Squirrel Squadron? It's my community of tech and non-tech people. We've got uh, thousands of users now, thousands of people participating. And um, we have these events every week. Um, there's not one next week, but uh, pretty much every week after that, um, uh, except for Easter breaks and such, uh, we have an, a free event of this kind. Uh, we have a free forum where executives are, are talking about all kinds of interesting topics. There's some examples there. You know, what do you think about story points? Um, what do you think about uh, whether people should have requirements or not? Those are the sorts of things that we're talking about in the forum uh, and in the Squirrel Squadron more generally. So um, feel free to join. There's a weekly email. So there's a newsletter that comes along with it, uh, a free list of resources. There's tons and tons of great stuff. And I do it all for free. Why do I do it for free? It's my way of giving back. So uh, it's, uh, you know, I've learned so much from uh, over 200 different companies that I've worked with in the past eight or nine years uh, that uh, I'd love to give that back to other people. And it's my contribution to society. So uh, help me out with that. Come along to the, the forum, come along uh, to squirrelsquadron.com, uh, where you can uh, uh, have a look at all these things, as well as the recording of this event. Okay. Advertisement over is an advertisement for something free. Go figure. All right. Um, but uh, let me ask for all of you to give me a hand here because I want to make sure this is maximally relevant to you. So uh, please tell me in the comments, hi, Adina, wonderful to see you. Um, uh, give me uh, uh, what it is that brought you here. What sorts of research would you like to do? Or what are you curious about for using AI for research? Um, what I'm going to show you is how uh, a, a chat GPT-like tool can let you have uh, conversations with a large amounts of documents. So it's as if you had a research assistant who's out there looking for you. Um, but where do you, looking through those documents for you, what do you want to look at? What is the trove of documents that you're uh, most curious about? Um, we had one great uh, example. We had uh, someone sharing on the forum uh, that he has a lot of architectural documents in his technology team. And what he's really keen to do is to figure out what on earth do all those documents say. And that's exactly the sort of thing that we're looking for. So please put that in the chat. Now, if you if you don't do that, that's okay, because I'm just going to show you my examples. Um, but that may not be as relevant to you. And it means we'll get done sooner, which is okay with me. I'll go walk the dog. So uh, don't worry about me. <laughs> but if you want it to be most useful to you, do two things. First one is put in the chat what you're most interested in. Adina says domain-specific knowledge, but she hasn't said what domain. So uh, tell me a little bit more. What documents do you have? What kind of big trove of information do you have lying around? And you say, man, if I just knew everything that was in there, or I could figure out where in that all those books and all those documents, I could find the thing I want. But what, what is that tool for you? What is that set of um, information that you'd like to dig through? Uh, Chris says, find the themes and interesting items from a large amount of feedback. Reviews, customer interviews, sales calls, et cetera, at scale. Chris, beautiful example. Uh, I'm going to definitely come back to that one. I'm going to show you my example first, and then we're going to come back and, and maybe we'll do some, uh, we'll pick some from yours. Uh, Adina says, uh, lab automation, supply chain, wallets, and banking. Um, so, uh, Adina, if you've got documents on that, that's fantastic. If you're looking for information from the web, this will be kind of relevant to that, but it may not be, well, you may be able to collect the information. So I'll show you how to do that. So Adina, I think I can make it relevant for you as well. So uh, Adina and Chris, I'm going to try to do that for you. Clinton, feel free to pipe up. Um, I know Nicholas was going to come. Uh, there might be others. Oh, here's Clinton. Um, 
uh, he says he's used offline models because of data concerns. Quentin, super important topic. Make sure I come back to that one. Don't let me leave <laughs> without commenting on the security concerns. Um, in particular, I want to explain why I'm on a different computer today. If I look a little bit different, if you come to these before, um, I, I'm on a different computer for a very specific reason, because I don't use these tools on the computers where I have uh, client information. And I'm going to explain that. So super important to be very, very careful about the security issues that come up. Great. So we've got uh, uh, several examples of types of data that people want to look at. Uh, Adina is looking for data, I think, maybe from the web, which is a slightly different use case. We'll cover that. And uh, Clinton's uh, raising very important security concerns. We got tons to cover. We're not going to be out of stuff to talk about. But let me do some chat GPT bashing first. Let me start by telling you why the way people are using AI today um, it is a terrible use. It's just the worst use. It's like using a bicycle um, to uh, go, uh, go down a river. You probably could figure it out. The bicycle would probably float, you know, if you inflate the tires enough and you could probably kind of balance on it. But, and a bicycle is a means of transportation. But my God, it's a terrible way to go on a river. It's designed for roads. So why are you taking this fantastic bicycle that we have in ChatGPT and, and Gemini and all the other models and you're using it to write words? These things are terrible at writing words. We do not want words that come from chat GPT or large language models. Maybe someday they'll get good at it. I'm not holding my breath, but uh, the, they are definitely not good at it today. And I'm going to prove that to you. Uh, Chris says also he's looking for competitor research, actual facts from the web. Good. So your use case is going to be a bit like Adina. The second one will be a bit like Adina's. So let me go to that. Now, the first technological challenge I'm going to have is clicking the right button so that I show you the right thing. So I want to share my screen. Yes, I know that uh, I have to do certain things. And then I choose the right window, which is that one. And I think I'm sharing my screen. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, Laura, who's monitoring us today. And Laura, can you just verify? Can you see what's on the screen? She's going yes for me. Good. Excellent. Laura's our community manager. She's the one who keeps the Squirrel Squadron going and actually makes everything work. So give her tons and tons of credit for that. So I hope you can all see ChatGPT here on the screen. And um, you've all probably played with this. If, if you haven't, by all means do. Um, it's 20 bucks a month. And um, you're essentially using the um, uh, large resources of loads and loads of venture capitalists to get something very, very cheap. This would cost you a lot more if you paid the full the full whack for it, um, but they're subsidizing it to get usage. Uh, and uh, you can ask it all kinds of crazy questions. Uh, so for example, I can say, uh, what is the weather today in uh, 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 Romania? I, I think that's where Adina is. I don't remember. Uh, Adina, I think you're in Romania. I'm not sure, but I'm going to ask about Romania anyway. I know you're in that part of the world, but I don't know exactly where you are. Oh, can't provide real-time information. Okay, fine. Well, I probably should have asked uh, some uh, about some information. Um, I should have asked that on a, a search engine. That probably would have been better. But uh, let's try this. Uh, what was the weather last week in Romania? I don't know. Is Romania is it snowing there? Doesn't have access to real-time data. Okay, this wasn't what I was expecting. All right, doesn't have historical weather records. I was trying to get it to go to the web. This is one of the frustrations is when you ask these kinds of questions, you, know, you, you don't always get very helpful answers. Um, let me try a different one. Uh, so I'm gonna try, um, uh, when was the first bicycle, since I've been talking about bicycles, we got them on the brain today for some reason, uh, invented. There, I think I can actually get an answer to that question because it's not about weather or real-time data or something. Uh, good, here we go. So we get a nice little summary, uh, and I happen to have been looking this up for some writing I'm going to be doing, um, and, and so I do know this is correct. Um, now, the kinds of things, the kinds of warnings you get about ChatGPT generally are, don't trust it. If you ask it a question, it might give you the wrong answer. You might get un, um, unexpected information. It might not... Um, uh, it might not work. You might not uh, get the right answer because it hallucinates, right? It gives you uh, inaccurate uh, data, and it does sometimes. And it's worth checking those kinds of things. But I'm much less interested in that. What I'm interested in, and, and the thing that really worries me the most, is that this is terribly boring information. The invention of the bicycle dates back to the early 19th century. The exact date of the first bicycle's invention is somewhat debated due to the evolution of various designs over time. What an awkward sentence. Uh, early predecessor of the modern bicycle, invented by Carl Dre in 1817, accurate, accurate facts. Um, uh, two wheels connected by a frame, propelled by pushing off the ground. It gives you a bunch of information, but it just isn't very exciting. 
this information is valuable. It's like what you get from Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not meant to be dramatic and exciting and interesting. But let's see if we can get it to, to write something a little more exciting. Uh, tell me an exciting story about Carl Drace, right? This guy who invented the first bicycle. So can we get an exciting story out of it? Uh, fascinating, adventurous life. Uh, he had, um, there was a volcanic eruption. He had a, yeah, economic hardship, poor harvests. Set out to invent a new mode of transportation. I'm asleep already. The problem with this is it's again, very factual. It's not writing something that would be engaging to the reader and uh, make them excited. So let me see if I can do something a little bit better. Uh, now I didn't get this ready, that's my fault. Uh, so let's see, I think I can do, uh, well actually, no, I can just type it into chat GPT, how about that? So I'm just gonna type it over there so you can see what I'm typing. That's probably the easiest way and chat GPT will be confused by it, but I don't care. Um, uh, Drace uh, nearly went bankrupt. Uh, bankrupt after, you can see how my brilliant typing is on this unfamiliar computer. Um, after the year without a summer in 1816, um, uh, his family nearly starved and his uh, noble title uh, was no help in uh, saving him from debtor's prison. Now, in just a couple sentences, I've given you uh, a much uh, more exciting version. My version's made up. <laughs> I have no idea whether this actually happened to this guy. But um, uh, my language is more exciting. It's clearly human. Um, it, it's going to get somebody's attention in a way that this kind of dry recitation of facts does not. Now, there's no surprise at all in realizing that, um, uh, you know, if you want to write an essay for, um, uh, for a blog post, if you want to write engaging content for marketing, if you want to do something with what comes out of ChatGPT or something, you're going to the wrong place. And the reason is that ChatGPT and Gemini and all of their friends basically took the, the lowest common denominator, the, the um, most common sorts of things that they could find on the Internet. And guess what? The internet is full of terrible writing. <laughs> it's full of things that are um, not very exciting, not very interesting, um, uh, 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 generated already even before AI. And now they're starting to get AI uh, being trained on AI, which gets even worse. So you're not going to have very interesting writing. So please, please, please stop using these tools to write anything. If you're generating blog posts, if you're um, uh, sending cold emails to uh, customers, by the way, I'm doing a debate in a couple of weeks on my next live stream. I think it's in three weeks um, with somebody who believes that he can really get great results by having uh, uh, AI models send cold emails to people. Now, maybe he's right and I'll come back and I'll say I, I got it wrong. I really think that there's something else going on there and I'll be very curious to find out what he thinks. That's uh, Josh Vula, who I'm uh, chatting to uh, in a few weeks on another live stream. So I just wanted to make this case to you that ChatGPT and its friends just cannot work well with um, uh, trying to produce documents for you, trying to produce writing that's interesting, exciting, gets people involved and, and engaged. But they're really good at giving you information. So as we've seen already here, we found out about this guy who invented the first bicycle. Um, we've heard some stories about him in a fairly boring way, but we have got the information. And that's the crucial thing about uh, any of these models is that, uh, that what they're really good at is taking a lot of information and processing for you. The way I like to think of this is um, if you were to go and hire a very clever research assistant, somebody who worked at the local university, who was a student at the local university, uh, I, I know many people who've done this to say to do research for a historical novel or to um, uh, help them with their um, uh, 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 research for um, uh, uh, papers that they're writing, something like that. It's very common to get a, a, a nice bushy-tailed and enthusiastic student who really doesn't know anything. Right? They're not knowledgeable and experienced and know your subject in great depth. In fact, they probably hardly know anything about it at all. But what they can do is go and get a whole bunch of information and bring it back to you so you don't have to read it all and say, here's the summary. Here's the information that I got from what you showed me. And uh, if you say have a box full of, uh, I don't know, um, commentary on Shakespeare and you want to know which one of these uh, comments on his usage of the semicolon, well, guess what? You can have this person go through that and find it for you. 
The wonderful thing is you don't have to go to the local university, hire a human and wait for them to wade through boxes and boxes of paper. You can actually go and use a tool, which I'm going to show you. Uh, it's, I think it's the first one of many. There are going to be many like this to actually do precisely that job much faster and with higher quality, um, but still with the same lack of understanding. So you're not going to want to use what this tool writes for you. You're going to want to use the information so that then you can do some writing. That's what I'm going to show you. Uh, right, so no new questions. Okay, so I'm going to carry on from here. Let me just try to do this with ChatGPT, and I'm going to illustrate uh, why it doesn't work so well. Um, and I'm going to do it with um, Chris's example, so competitor research. I'm going to do competitor research, I don't know, for bicycles. I don't know, I'm on a bicycle kick today, so we'll we'll stick to that. So let me switch over here to, uh, yeah, we'll get rid of, oh, and I haven't spelled bankrupt correctly. That's very embarrassing. I do know how to spell bankrupt, and luckily I, I don't have to spell it that often. Okay, but uh, let's do a little more research. We'll start a new uh, a new chat here so we have new context and everything and we're going to say uh tell me um all of the uh, bicycle manufacturers bicycle manufacturers uh currently operating operating in the u.s so let's see if chat gpt can do that okay so uh gives us some notable ones and here we have names of cannondale i know them and um, actually, I don't know any of the other surly bikes. That doesn't sound like a very nice place. I don't think I want to buy a bicycle that's surly. I'd like to buy one that's polite. Thank you very much. But uh, there we have 12 examples, and it's done some research for me. Hey, Squirrel, ChatGPT is perfectly fine at this. There's nothing wrong with it. I agree. However, now what I want to do is uh, tell me uh, which uh, bicycles, uh, uh, bicycle manufacturer, uh, makes a, um, a a cycle suitable for um, aquatic use. So I was saying before, hey, uh, we want to look for a bicycle that um, uh, you know you don't want to use a bicycle to go down the river. Um, but they have found one here. Schiller bikes, okay, they do make a water bike. It's designed for riding on water. Okay, I didn't know about that. So that's doing an effective job. But now I want to say, um, tell me the uh, specifications and um, bill of materials for a typical water bike. Now, here's where we're going to start to get into hallucinations. So uh, we're between 9 to 12 feet. That sounds a little big, OK? Um, it's starting to give me some information. Uh, and it says that the actual specification of materials may vary <laughs> based on the actual bike. Um, and uh, uh, here are some general ones, common materials used in bicycles designed to float on water with stability. It's not telling me a whole lot of information. And the reason is that what I haven't done is fed it as Chris might like to do. Chris, I'm, I'm sure you're not in bicycles. I don't know what your, what your uh, competitor research is, but whatever you're looking to get information about, um, uh, 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 what we haven't done and what you'd like to do is to feed it all the manuals for all your competitors, for example, which are probably publicly available. You could scrape those. And, and I've tried to get ChatGPT to go do that, but it hasn't really gone and scraped anything. It's just used whatever its knowledge is already. And I, I know that, by the way, because it hasn't done a little um, uh, a sort of circle, uh, circular logo that kind of fills in. You know when it goes to the web. And um, I could try to prompt it to go to the web and get this kind of information, but it's not going to know where to look. And it's not going to give me a bunch of information based on the documents that are available, which would tell me, hey, here's how I could build a water bike so I could compete with these uh, folks who made one. I didn't know there really was one. <laughs> I thought we wouldn't find one. Uh, learn something new every day, don't you? But um, uh, the, the key thing for, for Chris and Adina and, and folks who want to do this kind of open source research is that uh, the problem with these tools, they're not sophisticated enough yet to really go and do the research for you on the web. They don't know where to look. But don't worry, because there are uh, things starting to emerge that can do that. And let me show you one of those. Uh, so I'm going to switch over here. And the sharp-eyed among you will have noticed that I have something here called Zenfetch. Um, and I think we have uh, um, the Zenfetch uh, founders uh, here in the chat with us, at least one of them. I think either Gabe or Akash is here. So uh, hi to you guys. And um, uh, certainly this is a, a tool that's just come out um, in the last few months. Um, I've been using it um, and really, really helpful because what you can do is what I'm showing you here. I have loads and loads of data that I have put in. And uh, for example, I have lots and lots of web pages here. 
Uh, and so these are interesting things that I found. I'm going to show you how to add one of these. Uh, and these are interesting things I've picked up that I think I might want to write about someday. And just like uh, Chris might go around to bicycle manufacturers and get a whole bunch of manuals, um, Adina might go around uh, uh, to uh, her topics that she was interested in. Um, where was Adina's list? Uh, supply chain. So she might get a whole bunch of articles about supply chain. She wants to know a whole lot about it. You can put it in in a way you can't with ChatGPT. So ChatGPT does have a way to um, uh, absorb documents, and you can um, make these documents appear and so on uh, within ChatGPT, but only a very small number. Uh, this is a fancy, the term for this is the context window. Don't worry about these uh, pieces of jargon. All it means is the amount of text you can give ChatGPT. So when I asked about the uh, invention of the bicycle, I wrote one line. Um, you might be able to write three or four lines. You've probably seen people write prompts where they say a whole bunch of different things. They try to lead the uh, model in the right direction so they produce the right results that they want. Um, and uh, you can make quite a long prompt. As a matter of fact, you can make it cover many, many pages but not enough to really cover what you want. If you wanted every manufacturer, every model of water bike that was available from that uh, funny company, if you wanted every Surly bike, uh, whatever those were, <laughs> that sounded like a very strange company name, uh, if you wanted the, the bill of materials for every one, you would run out of space and ChatGPT can't absorb it. Now, um, Claude, which is another competitor, um, claims to have, I, I think, a million tokens. I'm not quite sure. So these context windows are getting bigger. The problem with them is they're always finite. They're always limited. And um, so uh, what, what you have is if you have enough documents, you're going to get to the And if you're you know going around the web and getting lots of information, or as I've done, um, taking all my forum posts and a lot of my different writing, um, as I'm going to show you, you're going to run out of space if you try to use these tools. Plus, it's kind of hard to get them in. There's not an easy mechanism. So um, uh, what Zenfetch does really well is something, the fancy name for it is retrieval augmented generation. Uh, Chris was mentioning that, I think. Um, oh, <laughs> Chris mentions that I'm on ChatGPT 3.5. Of course, I haven't updated, and it's certainly uh, giving me some of the trouble. It's not as good, so let me just switch over. So if we do more with ChatGPT, we'll be on the right version. Thank you for noticing. I'm on a different computer than I normally am. Um, but my prediction still, and Chris is very welcome to disagree with me, my prediction is that you're still going to get very boring text. You are not going to get an exciting, engaging story that's going to make you uh, turn the pages and be thrilled about Baron uh, Dreis and his invention of the bicycle. You're, you're going to get pretty boring anodyne text. That's my prediction. Um, and yes, <laughs> Chris is right. Yeah, if I really want the weather in Romania, I can ask for that in a more successful way. Good point. Thank you for catching that. But the point still remains that if you have a whole lot of information and you want to use these tools for research to get the best you can out of those pieces of information of that large trove of documents, ChatGPT ain't your tool. Uh, and let me show you uh, how uh, Zenfetch works uh, so, and how I am actually using it uh, to get um, very useful data. So I'm going to start with how I generated these web pages. So these are pages that I just came across as I read the web. Uh, so I'm going to go to, uh, let's see if I can get it here. Uh, news.ycombinator.com. Uh, this is a, a website with lots of uh, hackery uh, technological, uh, technological kind of news. Um, and in particular, I'm going to find one of these, as I do very frequently, and I'm going to say, oh, yeah, you know, I'd like to write about that. So I'm not quite sure what the Crooks radiometer is, um, but uh, oh, yeah, it's those things that kind of spin around, aren't they? So I've seen many of those. And I could imagine something I might want to write about that because uh, this has a mysterious characteristic to it. It's kind of like other technology, right? How does ChatGPT work? Well, you get out some words, but how do they get there? How does it work? And how does this uh, tool actually, how does this um, uh, glass bulb actually have something inside it that turns when uh, you know there seems to be nothing making it go around? So this is a topic I might want to write about. And so what I'm going to do is just uh, pop over here to the Zenfetch save link. I click that. And there's a little turny thing, and then it says click, it's done. So what I should now see over here in the uh, dashboard is that I have a new uh, 96th page, which is added to the retrieval database for me, and there it is. So, uh, so far, all I've done is save a web page. This is not very exciting, so don't worry, uh, but something exciting is going to happen um, because now I'm going to be able to refer to these web pages and say, find me interesting information in that trove of documents, in that uh, set of information. So I'm going to go ask a question of my uh, of my documents. And so what I do is I go here to the, um, uh, the the chat 
And just like in chat GPT, I'm going to now ask a question. I'm going to say, um, what tech topics uh, can I write about today? And that's a research question. Using the information that I have in the various web pages I found as I go around the net, as I go to Hacker News and I see things that are interesting, I capture them. And then uh, if we give uh, Zen Fetch a minute, I think it's going to tell me some uh, exciting topics based on the web pages that, uh, that I was just showing. So here it goes, randomness in software. And here's an example uh, from my writing uh, about why uh, uh, shuffling doesn't work the way you think it does. Uh, here's a video that I did on uh, tech teams. Now, it seems to be favoring slightly things that I've written. And that is a usage that, uh, that I use all the time. I'm trying to draw things from my experience and things that I've written about in order to produce new things uh, to write about, new topics and new takes on those topics. Um, but here, I've, I've kind of reached into my own tool bag, and I, I'd rather not do that. So uh, let me see if I can limit myself. And so I'm just going to go into certain folders. Uh, this stuff is beta, by the way. So all this stuff is quite new. Um, don't be surprised if some things don't work. But I'm going to search within um, uh, the uh, web pages that I was just showing you. So I want to select those. And so now when I search, I'm going to be looking for those items. So can I just do up arrow? No, nope, I got to type in my question again. Let's see if I can do it. Um, which tech topics can I write about today? So I'm hoping that what I'll find is stuff like that article on the radiometer, which then inspires me. So I'm not going to show the results to humans. They're going to inspire me uh, based on uh, various things that I've read recently. And let's see what that turns up for us. Uh, gathering references and thinking and so on, but we'll give it just a moment. Ask everyone for a small amount of patience while these uh, mir uh, miraculous machines uh, churn away and produce lots of smoke. Give it a moment. And there we go. Interesting tech topics based on the items that I brought up. So uh, uh, I found an article on uh, a chatbot who got somebody to be interested in murder. Well, that certainly got my attention. Uh, and so that was an article I found interesting. Um, and then here's one about AI Tinder. So how could you talk to uh, people um, and get dates with them uh, using artificial intelligence? Um, and so uh, those both, the, the machine has said, hey, these are both about AI chatbots and, chatbots and virtual companions, which is a topic I'm interested in. And I would be very happy to write about that. I'm not going to ask ChatGPT or Zenfetch to go and write that article for me. I'm going to write the article. But what it's found is out of the hundred or odd um, web pages I put in here, and there are many more I could, there's two here that have a collision. There's two that look similar, just like that um, bushy tailed excited student from the local university could go through a whole bunch of articles and say, hey, this one seems to be similar to that one. And that's the sort of thing that these tools are tremendous at. You notice we didn't wait very long to go through about 100 web pages, and we could have gone through a 1,000. We could have gone through many, many more. Um, and we found uh, several different possible uh, collisions. So um, which ones could we use? Uh, so um, where's some where there's uh, common common items? There's one the only one where it's found two things that went together. but. Um, uh, it's pointing me at uh, discussions about the metaverse. So I'm very interested in the yeah, Apple Vision Pro. So I can bring that together and make an article out of that. There are lots of things I can use with web pages that I've visited in the same way that Chris could get together a whole bunch of pages and information about other bicycle manufacturers or whatever Chris's um, environment is, in the same way that Adina could get more information about supply chain. And all of you could be um, uh, keeping track of your current interests and using a tool like Zenfetch. Uh, to go and summarize for you and find collisions and find interesting uh, happenstance, ha interesting serendipity, where um, uh, several different ideas collide and give you new notions. So um, I'm going to uh, stop for questions and make sure any of you who, who have any are welcome to, to bring them up. Chris has pointed out already that I was on the wrong version, but uh, I've got that fixed. Uh, so good about that. Um, and uh, then I want to come back to a few of the topics that uh, several of you brought up. So stop me with more questions. I'm very interested. Oh, we do have new things. Sorry. So I'll try to grab those. Keep up with everything. Clinton says that's pretty cool. I agree that's pretty cool. And in particular, it's cool for the type of use case that we really haven't been able to address before. And, and one great example is my brother, who uh, for a very long time was in charge of uh, document management and um, 
uh, searches and, and um, digitization at Shell Oil. And he brought me in one day and he showed me in his office rack upon rack upon rack, just shelf after shelf after shelf of huge amounts of documentation where people had carefully written down, hey, we built this oil rig this way. And, uh, you know, the third strut from the left is a little weaker because uh, we had this accident while we were building it 20 years ago. And all kinds of really, really detailed information, which was locked up in these books. And which is really important if you had a fire on your oil rig or if you had a safety inspection or something like that. You really wanted this information available to you, but it was locked up in this uh, in this room. Now, my brother's job was to digitize. His job was just to scan it all in and make sure it was searchable. And that was a great first step. But had he been operating, he's retired now, but had he been working in that now, I would be going to him and saying, forget searching. What you want to do is to do the kinds of queries that I've just been demonstrating, and you want to get it into a retrieval augmented generation system like Zenfetch, where you can uh, actually not just search the data, but actually have research done, get queries answered, get more information, and trigger new thoughts. And that's the sort of thing that might help you to build better oil rigs in the future, right? Based on the information and the learnings from 20 or 30 years of very complicated documents. Um, summarized for you by a machine doing a lot of work, but not you doing a lot of work. So Chris says, uh, great stuff. He's not in bicycles, but he's going to have to pivot after this call. You can pivot on a bicycle. Sounds great, Chris. Uh, come back and enjoy the recording later. And I'm, I'm hoping I see you on the forum uh, where we can continue these kinds of discussions. So the next thing I want to do is actually to demonstrate you the, to you the workflow I actually use to generate new posts on the forum. So, uh, and don't worry, I'm not gonna show you anything written by ChatGPT. I was just bashing it before, so it would be inconsistent for me to say, here, I've got something written by ChatGPT. But instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up with um, our, a follow-up uh, uh, forum post. Uh, and Laura knows she keeps the forum running. Uh, I'm posting all the time on the Squirrel Squadron forum on all kinds of different topics related to the intersection between tech and business and how tech and business people can talk to each other better. So when I come across articles like that, I save them in Zenfetch. And then when it's time to write an article, I'm going to show you the process that I follow in order to get a new article suggested by uh, AI, but driven by me. So how does that look? Uh, switch over here to Zenfetch. And uh, now I'm going to do a new chat. And in here, now you notice I don't have this little um, bookmark sort of icon lit up. Um, I could choose to restrict myself to any of these sources. So I've just got one book in there, my book, Agile Conversations. Um, but I have all my podcast transcripts in there that are available. I have loads and loads of forum posts. All of these are my writing, um, except for the web pages. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything except the web pages, because for right now, what I want to do is find things from my own writing. Um, I don't want things uh, that come from other people, because my purpose today is to do research within my own writing. A perfectly valid case we were just doing is looking for research in other people's writing. The, you can think of the bills of materials of all those different water bicycles, for example, in, in uh, my invented case for, for, uh, for Chris. But right now, what I'm going to do is I now have those five, everything except web pages, and I'm going to be looking for new topics to write about. And um, uh, let's see, what was I just working on? I was uh, working on with uh, and doing an evaluation for an educational tech business. So I'm going to say, uh, what topics would be interesting uh, in uh, technology technology for education. And so that's going to then be based on um, those uh, tools that I put in. By the way, uh, I'd love it if some of you out there would suggest some questions. What are other things? What are other topics that we might bring up? So I, I don't want you to think of this as a kind of fixed demonstration. I literally just came up with this question just now based on the company I was working with this afternoon. But why don't you throw in some? Adina, you tell me a question about uh, supply chain, for example, that you're interested in. Or Clinton, uh, tell me uh, a topic that you would like to write about uh, and you'd like to get some more information about it. So I see one here that uh, everybody will know I'm, I'm very excited about. I think the uh, Vision Pro has tremendous uh, opportunity for the future for education. And so um, uh, I can get uh, more engaging learning. Um, I can, the Apple's Vision Pro, uh, 
uh, the, the model has left that out, but I can easily add it. The Vision Pro can give you infinite screen space. So that's something I'm very interested in. I have quite a huge monitor here, but I'd love to have even more. And the Vision Pro promises that. So then I might actually write an article. Now, I'm, I'm not going to try switching around to, to uh, Microsoft Word or something uh, to do my writing, but I'll just do it here. So if I take that augmented virtual reality suggestion, which I hadn't been thinking about, I wasn't thinking about virtual reality for education, but now I can. And I can write something engaging based on this. So I can say, um, uh, bring history to life uh, by having conversations, uh, conversations in real time uh, with King Henry uh, or um, Oliver Cromwell uh, uh, using the fantastic uh, potential of the uh, Apple Vision Pro. Uh, here are pros and cons and cons of uh, this type of tool uh, in the classroom. Now, I've just made this up. I don't claim to have any particular knowledge on this topic, but it's the sort of thing that I might write about and try to get people excited about because I really do think that augmented reality um, will be part of uh, educational uh, practice uh, not too long from now because it just has so many benefits for um, additional um, uh, data um, transfer, getting more information into your brain at the same time, getting more serendipity where something on one screen matches up with something else. Um, and uh, a whole lot of other things besides. So uh, what I haven't done is said immersive AR VR experiences can make learning more engaging. That's not very engaging itself as a sentence. I've talked about uh, having conversations in real time with King Henry or Oliver Cromwell, which is more interesting, but it's based on uh, the machine having gone back through my writing and saying, hey, Squirrel, you're interested in this. You're probably interested in that. So uh, I've used it as inspiration, as research, um, it's given me an article I can link to. I don't remember quite what that one is, but um, I'm sure I wrote something about that. And I could go back to that, read about it, and say, ah, well, that makes me think, here's how we can talk about this for education. Uh, Clinton says uh, something along the lines of, help me generate an AI, general, an AI roadmap for my business with a special focus on code generation for software teams. OK, great. So let's see. I'm going to translate that slightly because I, I know what I might have written about. Um, this is another case where um, the, the um, be, being about an area you know a lot about is helpful because you can ask a better question and therefore you're going to get better answers. Um, so I know my writing pretty well. So uh, I think that I might have said something like, um, "How? Um, uh, what have I written about? This is a trick I often use. What have I written about um, uh, uh, GitHub Copilot uh, and uh, its use in uh, generating, uh, in accelerating, accelerating um, uh, um, development team, developer productivity. Uh, and actually, instead of saying, what have I written? I'm going to do that a little better now that I think about it. What I'm going to say is, oops, sorry, what I'm not doing what I mean. There we go. What uh, could I write? about GitHub Copilot. What I was forgetting there, I'm just getting used to these as everybody else is. What I was forgetting there is I've told this, I'm pointing over here to the, the five here next to the bookmark signal. I've told it only to look at my writing. So I don't have to say, what have I written? I, I can say, what would be interesting from what you know? Well, what do you know? It's all the stuff I've written. So um, I, I was over specifying there and I think I could do better. So let's see how that works for me. We'll scroll down here, give it a few moments to uh, look things up. In the meantime, uh, Adina is interested in project management tools that have AI features. Excellent. So she's back to the case, and this is a great case, where you don't have a lot of documents. She hasn't done a bunch of um, going to page to page to page and clicking the little Zen Fetch button, uh, as I've already done here. Um, but she's interested in doing the research on the web. So um, uh, I'll come back to that one, but it's a great question. So uh, let's see. Um, this is giving me... Uh, Topics. Now, those are quite general topics. So this first one, I'm going to throw away. I'm glad Zenfetch did this because this first one is rubbish. This uh, tells me kind of generic stuff I could find on the GitHub Copilot Wikipedia page, or if I went to GitHub's documentation, and it tells me nothing new. It, it hasn't really used the information in my um, uh, in my writing, which is what I wanted it to do. Uh, and so I'm just going to ignore that one. 
But that's okay because I didn't spend very much on that, right? That didn't take me hours and hours to generate. I didn't do tons of research to produce this. I'm certainly not going to show it to any humans because it's not only boring, but um, useless. Uh, but I can ignore it very easily. And But then I can go to the next one and I can say, hey, look, here's a forum post that's about sleepwalking on skills. And uh, uh, I can't remember exactly what I wrote there, but I'm sure I wrote something interesting about um, uh, uh, skills in your team. And here's a connection between Copilot and helping junior developers learn. And that's a topic that I know about kind of implicitly. And, and I've seen that and I have an opinion about it. And I think actually Copilot might be damaging to junior developers. So I don't necessarily have to agree with what Zenfetch is suggesting, but it's found something relevant in the documents, which I otherwise would have had to search around and, and try to find things and look in my forum and look elsewhere. And then I would be, um, uh, you know, I'd spend a lot of time just getting to this insight. Just for another one, uh, it can be an AI pair programmer. Well, I've written a lot about pair programming. That's something I am excited about. And I've also written a lot about this idea of uh, centaurs, so having a human in the loop, um, because you never want an AI to do things by itself. Notice here I am, I'm gonna write an article based on um, what, the, uh, what the AI suggests. And uh, uh, I'm gonna do the writing. That's the, the human part of the centaur, the horse and human combined, the AI and human combined. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do the writing but the AI is making suggestions to me. And I might not have thought of pair programming with AI. I wouldn't have thought of that specifically, but man, I have a lot to say about pair programming. It's one of my favorite practices. So I, I hope this is giving you a kind of impression of the sorts of things you can do with a tool like this. The difference again from um, using raw chat GPT from just going to open AI and, and using their software is that, uh, uh, that if you um, uh, just go there, you're very limited in how much information you can put in. Now, uh, Gabe is here, so he can uh, he can tell us, uh, hang on, actually, Squirrel, you can't put more than a, a trillion documents in or something like that. I'm sure there's some limit, but I haven't hit it yet. And I've been consistently going and um, adding new documents. Uh, this computer was in the shop, which is why some of my stuff is old. But um, until then, I was consistently um, uh, going and adding new documents as I would read Hacker News and other sources. And I would say, okay, great. This is a web page I want to write about. This is something I want to write about. Here's a new forum post that I've done. Here's something else that I've uh, uh, done a, a live stream on. And here's the transcript. By the way, Zenfetch can handle, uh, as I understand it, YouTube videos, um, lots of other material. So it doesn't have to be necessarily be written. Um, if it can get a transcript, it can deal with it. And um, so I keep uh, feeding it more and more information. And then I ask it for uh, topics uh, that I could write about. And this is a really useful workflow for me because it makes sure it saves me the research time of finding stuff that I want to point people to. Right when I write my newsletter, I want to put um, links in there that drive people to more stuff that I've written, so they get more excited about things I do, uh, and then they contribute more on the forum and they join the squadron and all the other good things. Uh, and similarly, uh, Chris, for example, might want to uh, discover information about his competitors and bicycles or whatever it is. And uh, uh, as he does that. Uh, he's going to get more and more value as he adds more and more um, ex examples of his competitors documentation their marketing their um, uh, uh, business report their business plans and business reports and um, stock prices and who knows what else the great thing is is you keep adding more and more data this becomes more and more valuable okay so i'd love more questions gabe says no limit i can't believe that's quite true gabe because um, the, the planet is only so big so there uh, there's got to be a limit somewhere but that's the mathematician in me speaking gabe says he's not going to have a commercial limit that makes sense um clinton says i have the best hooks for my content excellent i may quote you on that clinton i enjoy having good hooks i also enjoy having good content so i hope that you find the actual content itself to be interesting as well um now um, I'd love more questions from you. In particular, I want to grab one of these questions that you've been putting in here, uh, and I want to write an actual very brief post, um, and then that's what I'll post on um, on the, the forum as our as our follow up here. And I'll ask you to comment on that. And, and people who've uh, you know only been able to watch the recording might want to say more and, and ask questions. You know, how did you generate that? Why did you do it this way? And so on. So give me another topic, uh, everybody who's out there. Uh, what's another one that I might write about? Um, based on my own writing, so based on things that you've seen me talk about or that you'd like me to talk about. Um, so uh, Adina says, two examples with context window on prompting. Context is important not to get full disk by loading unnecessary files. I'm not quite sure what you mean, Adina, but um, uh, examples uh, with the context window, um, well, I think I gave you one before. So uh, what I couldn't do in um, a chat GPT like tool is to take the volume of data that Gabe says is uh, unlimited and take all that data, put it all in and, and have chat GPT churn through it. I would, I would hit a limit. 
And um, I'm, I'm sure Gabe is going to have to install a limit, <laughs> impose a limit at some point. He can't have infinite data. But the great thing about this retrieval augmented generation method is that it allows um, the, the language model to work with much, much larger volumes of data to really put everything in a database to be able to filter through it um, and, and then to tell you um, the kinds of summaries, the kinds of suggestions uh, that we've been seeing here. Uh, so I hope that's helpful, Adina. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but feel free to ask another. Um, I'm going to go back to, um, uh, oh, yes. So now I didn't really do uh, Clinton's example. So let me do Clinton's example closer to, to what he said. Uh, Clinton, let me work with that one. Oh, uh, I don't think I can cut and paste here. Um, let's see. Uh, generate a roadmap for my business so uh, uh, and code generation for efficiency. Okay, so I think I can do that one. And that would be a great um, forum post. That sounds great. So uh, I'm going to do that one. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Clinton, when I did it before, I, I kind of got um, off on a, a sidetrack because I was trying to think of things that, that fit me more closely. But it's good to have something that doesn't fit as well. So um, uh, what uh, is uh, what do we have? That's relevant. Whoa, whoa, sorry. Sorry, it's just gone off and taken that. I didn't mean to hit enter. How do I stop? Oh, Gabe, we need a uh, we need a stop button. <laughs> Chat GPT has one, but I don't know that we have one here. Uh, so let me try not hitting the enter button this time. Uh, what do we have that, uh, uh, on the topic of uh, roadmaps? Well, it's starting to try to give me insights on this. Uh, do I stop it? Uh, no, that isn't very good. I want you to stop. Nope. Is that a stop? Sorry, figuring all these things out. Okay, but we're just going to ignore that text. We'll just write the new one. Uh, the, the, the joys of uh, 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 um, cutting edge software, right? So there's uh, lots of things that um, uh, work differently, <laughs> sometimes don't work perfectly. This is the nature of new stuff, but the results are really fantastic when they, when they do work. Um, what do we have on the topic of roadmaps um, for uh, um, successful products? Um, making use of uh, AI productivity uh, through uh, GitHub Copilot. Now, I've definitely never written anything specifically on that topic. But uh, let's see what Zenfetch can come up with. I, and I've given it uh, quite a. Um, uh, uh, a confusing kind of complex description here. I haven't tried to, you know, make a beautiful prompt and um, give it uh, um, a whole lot of guidance on on what to to, to suggest for me. I'm just saying, um, you know, and I haven't even spelt products. I should have said products plural. That would have been grammatically correct. But uh, my prediction is that uh, it will figure it out without too much trouble. Uh, let's see. Um, Gabe says coming soon. We'll have a stop button. Of course you will. Um, oh, and uh, Roland has another suggestion. <laughs> uh, accurate estimates for non-functional requirements. Great. We'll go to that one. I know you're really interested in that topic. Uh, let's see what we get here. Uh, so uh, elephant carpaccio, that's thin, um, uh, thin slices of work. Of course, I talk about that all the time. If you use coding assistance, you could validate the code early. Eh, not too excited about that. Uh, centaurs, we already talked about. Uh, imperfect indicators. Now, that's a really good one. Uh, if you had AI-assisted development, then uh, you could use the AI to um, uh, uh, catch uh, potential er issues early. Uh, and so you could focus your AI on um, uh, producing those kind of imperfect indicators. Uh, so that could be a topic for the, uh, uh, for the forum. So um, the article that I might write based on that, and I'm just going to do a couple sentences just to give you the impression, is um, uh, you need uh, as many uh, imperfect uh, indicators. Oop. I don't know what I did there. In mm, I'm, I'm not familiar with this keyboard. Apologies. Uh, imperfect indicators, indicators, uh, as you can get. And a new idea that Zenfetch just suggested uh, is using um, AI tools like GitHub Copilot to generate them, uh, uh, code to measure those indicators. The uh, uh, AI um, uh, helpers like this are best at repetitive code, 
that uh, doesn't require uh, any creativity and uh, 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 sorry, hard to uh, compose and talk at the same time. Uh, and that's a that could be a perfect fit for generating a suite of uh, production metrics uh, for real-time product feedback. There we go. So uh, I didn't ever think of that, uh, and I certainly didn't even think of the prompt that came uh, um, uh, came from one of you, uh, and it came from Clinton. And um, uh, I've managed to generate the first couple sentences of what I think would be a pretty interesting post. Now I'm going to put that up on the actual forum and then, then comment, hey, wait a minute, this actually came from the workflow that we were talking about uh, and ask people to comment. Is this a, a useful thing? Here's a puzzle, by the way. Look at some of my recent writing. Can you tell which ones came from this process? Uh, I bet you can't because the writing is still me, right? And whether you like or don't like my writing, it's still going to be me. <laughs> it's still going to sound like me, like a human. And it doesn't sound like the sort of, the sort of digested slurry that you get from ChatGPT when you ask it to write on a topic like this. You would get um, uninteresting topics. It wouldn't be informed by examples. You know, I could tell a few stories about uh, teams that have tried to generate metrics in, in previous iterations before ChatGPT and so on. And um, I can make that quite an interesting post, I suspect. Uh, certainly much more interesting than the tool could. But what I wouldn't have is the research. I wouldn't have the inspiration. So I'm finding this tremendously useful. Now, I want to comment on the security issues, which I'm going to do briefly. Um, and Roland, I don't think I'm going to have time for your helpful, uh, very interesting topic. But uh, you can do that one again. Or maybe you want to try that. Uh, post it on the forum and, and challenge us to see whether we can tell. But um, uh, the, the uh, other thing I want to suggest and suggest very strongly is that uh, I think it, again, was Clinton who was saying, um, uh, we need to be very, very cautious and thoughtful about the security issues that come from uh, using a tool like this. So uh, what I've done is up uploaded lots of information. I've gone to the public web, clicked the Zenfetch, the Zenfetch link, that's hard to say, um, uh, uh, multiple times on loads and loads of pages. Um, there's also an import mechanism, by the way. So if you have lots and lots of pages, you can just click import and uh, it'll upload all of them for you. Uh, and so I've done that using public information. This is stuff I've published to the world. It's, it's not secret in any way. And I've done it on a computer, as I said at the beginning, that is not connected to any of my client information. So my clients um, have give me data for um, uh, customer evaluations and um, uh, savings reports and lots of other things, very sensitive information. I have all that somewhere else. Why is that? Because what I don't want to do is explain to someone why suddenly there was a data breach or something could be nothing to do with Zenfetch themselves, but you know something goes wrong and, and somebody gets hold of some sensitive client information. Now, what I would love to do, and, and I'm sure Gabe will do this someday, <laughs> he'll tell me that it's on the roadmap for 2027 or something like that. I'd love to have a, a local version, right, which I could run on a computer that's only within my network um, that never touches the web, and then I could put client data on it and I would feel comfortable. Um, but uh, the danger of uploading anything that's not public to these tools is just too high. Um, and so I, I wouldn't suggest that you use it for anything sensitive. Um, there was a terrible example. It was both terrible and wonderful. Um, and I wrote about it on the forum. It's probably here in the in the backlog. It's something I could write more about. Um, the uh, um, There was a doctor in an, uh, an emergency room in an A&E um, uh, who was uh, really overloaded. And he said, uh, you know, I used chat GPT to, re GPT to really help me tonight in the emergency room. I had a patient who had a serious medical condition and it was complicated. And he had some very worried family members, all of whom just kept coming to me and saying, how is he? How is he? What's going to happen? And I had to repeat the same explanation. And I got tired of doing that and it distracted me from other patients. But don't worry. What I did is I went to chat GPT and I typed in his medical history. And I said, uh, give me a description of uh, what we're doing and what the prognosis is. Uh, and it printed out a nice little thing. He printed it, handed it to the uh, the nurses, and he said, whenever they come and ask, show them this. And, and that, that saved the question. Uh, and the nurse didn't have to answer the question either. She had uh, He or she had this nice little document, which uh, uh, somebody could read. Now, the problem with that, of course, <laughs> is that um, the person's medical history <laughs> went to chat GPT, which is somewhere far away in the cloud, right? It's, it's controlled by open AI. It might be used for training. Um, and uh, you know you're violating HIPAA and about 17 uh, data protection and about 17 other laws 
uh, when you start um, sharing information like that. Now, I don't think any of you are very likely to share um, sensitive medical data. Uh, I think you're all uh, capable of not doing that. But I, I do want to illustrate, I do want to underline that this is a limitation of tools like this, that um, they're, they're really wonderful. They can do really amazing things. And I hope I've shown you uh, a type of use case that I'm finding tremendously valuable and that you're able to use as well. But uh, there are limits. <laughs> and one of the limits is uh, thou shalt not use anything sensitive yet. Uh, when you can run these things on your phone, when you can run them locally on your own computer, when you can uh, control uh, the, the, um, the, the way the, the data is used, and that day is coming. The, the, those tools are, are coming, and, and people who are cutting edge are, are already doing them uh, by themselves. They're kind of making their own systems. Uh, then we'll be able to use them in that way. Certainly, if you have a team of data scientists, you could ask them, hey, could you create a retrieval augmented generation system for me? They'll know what you're talking about. They can talk with you about whether that's feasible and whether it works in your use case, and they could keep the data secure and, and private. But in the meantime, there's tremendous value that we can all get uh, by doing the sorts of things I've described. Just browsing around the web and, and clicking things that are interesting to you is one use case. That's something Adina could do, for example, with her interest in supply chain. As she reads about supply chain, she just keeps hitting the ZenFetch button. And then when she has a question about supply chain, she's got hundreds of pages in ZenFetch. She asks a question, she gets a useful and valuable answer, um, which uh, tells her all about uh, uh, the supply chain question that she's interested in. Um, or uh, in these um, cases where you have uh, competitor information, as Chris does, um, or Roland is interested in um, uh, uh, making estimates. So he might find uh, documents or books um, on, on this topic. Anything you can digitize, anything you can get into Chrome, uh, into a browser on your screen, um, you can capture in ZenFetch. And there are other tools like this. The ZenFetch is not the only one, just happens to be the one I use. Um, but uh, you can capture those pieces of information, get them into the tool, and ask questions and have a conversation with um, the, the research uh, and, and use that research assistant uh, to get you really useful insights, ideas for writing, um, uh, topics that you can investigate, further answers to questions. Uh, and I'm finding that tremendously useful, and I hope that you are too. Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions, so I'm assuming that I've stunned you all into silence with all kinds of uh, brilliant and exciting ideas. Um, but uh, of course, there's going to be more discussion, including um, this uh, little uh, very short post that I, that I started writing here. I hope I can get it out of ZenFetch here in a minute. I'll, I'll figure out how to do that. But um, uh, over on the Squirrel Squadron forum is where we're continuing to discuss all these topics. So um, uh, I would love to, to see you over there. And I'm just going to share that here on the screen so you can see it. Uh, so head on over to squirrelsquadron.com. If you're not already a member, uh, I'd love to see you there and um, uh, join the forum, uh, uh, have a look at our weekly events. As I say, the next one is on uh, banning requirements. That's in a couple of weeks. Uh, and I'm going to be live in London in um, uh, the middle of April. So, uh, And we have somebody flying over from the US to, to, to join that event because uh, it's so interesting. That's on uh, tech as a foreign language. So lots of exciting things happening in the squadron. Uh, I've had a blast uh, talking with you today about ZenFetch and um, uh, using AI for research. I hope you found that valuable. And uh, I hope to see you uh, at many more squadron events and on the forum very soon. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care.